This video was sponsored by Power Circle Clothing and Headbusters Food Company in association with Cook Up Unlimited. Cook Up! It's not a podcast! Dennis here, back with another episode of This Is Not A Podcast. Y'all already know what the link read. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification button. Now let's get into it. Now tonight's episode is sponsored by Headbusters Food Company in association with Cook Up Unlimited. Y'all know what's up. Y'all hear the music in the background. So anyway, let's get into it. So check it out. Now before we start this episode, I want to dedicate this episode to a very special person that's near and dear to my heart. And that's my late aunt, the great Shelly D. My auntie. That's what we like to call her affectionately, my auntie Shell. So my auntie Shell has everything to do with tonight's episode. I want to say she was instrumental making this memory, making this my first ever concert a memorable one. And I like to point out a couple things. I was talking to a couple people today and um, we were talking about our very first concert that we ever been to. I'm talking about full-fledged concert. I know open mic. I'm talking about going to the Coliseum, looking at something, a big spectacle, a big production. The year for me was May 23rd, 1992. Now, I'll never forget this day because 1992 was like one of those years in hip-hop or in this case popular music as well 1992 the culture was different I mean back in the 90s y'all know about 90s hip-hop for some of y'all and it was a variety of a lot of different things but it's a couple things I want to highlight we ain't gonna jump into that but the year was 1992 this was the dawn of a new era it was ushering in a new era death row records dr. J was getting ready to drop the chronic at the time the biggest artist in the game at the time was none other other than MC Hammer, right? MC Hammer. Some of y'all shorties don't know no better. Some of y'all chuckling. But everybody that was there, y'all know what's up. I'm talking MC Hammer was one of the biggest artists in the game. I know y'all hear a lot of jokes and it's he was probably the most unconventional rapper out of all the rappers that you probably looked up to. Now, don't get me wrong. If, if he was uh, in your top 10 or your top 5, this is no shot to Hammer. Hammer wasn't the most lyrically inclined person, but he was the, one of the greatest entertainers of our time, literally. Like, this, they was comparing this man to the likes of Michael Jackson. So before Busta Rhymes and Diddy was putting on spectacles, it was MC Hammer. On the hip-hop side, there was nothing. No spectacle, no show was big. The MC Hammer show. This is before Puff Daddy. Before all of them, you can only compare him to pop stars like Michael Jackson because the man could dance for two and a half hours straight. He had about a 75 background dancers. Entourage was probably even bigger than that. So, and it was all on the payroll. He was balling. So, anyway, MC Hammer was the biggest artist in the game at the time. And every kid emulated everybody. He had the parachute pants, sung all the records. He won the most lyrically inclined rapper in the world so this was like totally unconventional but he was a pop star so he kind of transcended hip-hop and especially when it came to productions when it came to shows he put on a spectacle so in the year was 1992 he was literally coming off the please hammer don't hurt him album and he was going into the too legit to quit album which led up to the too legit to quit tour which was in 1992 so they made a pit stop to chicago the place was the rosemont Horizon, which now known as Allstate Arena, but us Chicagoans, you know, still call it the Rosemont Horizon, even though it's the Allstate Arena. My birthday had just passed. By the way, my birthday is May 15th, and uh, my auntie used to do a lot of cool things for all her nieces and nephews, and she treated me like one of her own. Like, she treated me more so like a son, and um, I love her so much for that. A lot of my childhood mem memories, as far as my cousins and um, a lot of my friends and everything like that, my auntie would take us a lot of different places. She would buy us a lot of cool stuff, clothes, shoes. So this particular year, she decided that she wanted to take us all to a concert. Me and my cousins, my aunties, and all of us went to the MC Hammer concert. Now this concert was lit, so we was amped up. My auntie not only bought us tickets to the concert, but she bought us outfits and everything else to go with it. Now back in the day, now y'all know how 90s fashion was. So at the time, we was wearing um, fashion brands like uh, you, cross colors, you know, things of that such. But anyway, this particular day, I remember the outfit she bought me. At the time, it was a fashion brand called Used. Now, a lot of the 90s heads and a lot of people from back in the day remember this brand. This brand was one of the hottest brands out at the time. And long and then, not only that, with the shoes to go with it, back in the day, we used to wear these shoes called the Leases. A lot of old heads, a lot of 80s babies, a lot of old school cats know about the Leases, man. The Leases was like one of the dopest shoes. Like, it was on the lines of like Theodore, you know, like some 
fly shoes, with some casual kicks, you know what I'm saying? That was the drip back then, let's just say. That was nobody wanted going to the Gucci store buying high-end clothes. Like only dope dealers and like rich, rich people did that. But that's a whole nother story for another time. But anyway, everybody was hyped up. This concert was one of the biggest concerts of the year. Let me tell you about the card, yo. MC Hammer was the headliner, but you had Boys to Men and you had Jodeci. And then on top of that, it was, it was some undercards under that too. This was like, it was MC Hammer's tour, but a few dates he would have, you know, I guess when certain states he would switch the lineup up, but for these particular dates, like the first half of the tour, you had Jodeci and Boys to Men, which were two of the biggest groups of that time, and they were on fire. So you had like, for the hood, you had Jodeci. We was big Jodeci fans. I mean, we like Boys to Men too. Boys to Men was more on a commercial popular side, and they had the backing, you know what I mean? They had Michael Bivens, and anybody know who Michael Bivens is? If y'all been living under a rock, Michael Bivens, one of the members of the legendary group New Edition. I don't think I even had to say that, because Mike Bivens don't need no introduction. And, and not only that, but he ended up becoming one of the dopest CEOs at the time. Young CEOs, let's just put that out there, man. You know, Michael Bivens don't get a lot of credit. He don't get enough credit. To credit that he deserves as an executive. So at that time, that was big, you know what I'm saying? This is why I brought him up. Now, when Boys the Men came out, he had ABC. If y'all know who ABC is, ABC was there that night. But see, we showed up late, so we never got a chance to see that card. It was ABC, MC Brand. So in other words, Michael Bivens made it to where uh, Boys the Men was like the franchise of his label at the time. Biv 10 Records slash Motown. But he also had MC Brains. ABC was like a kid group they was like a rap and song type of deal you know how it is with the big kid groups at the time it was real big at the time so he had his whole roster on the undercard and then with the three headliners of course it was Hammer's tour like I said by the time we got there Jodeci was performing so imagine that we walk in Jodeci is performing they doing they want to oh yeah oh yeah all right and then all of a sudden Boys the Men come because Boys the Men was selling a lot of records back then so was Jodeci but it was like a different you know what I'm saying? It was like NBA and then this M1 ball players. Now Jodeci was major, influential, iconic. In that same breath, you got Boys the Men who was more clean cut, um, school boy, prep, preppy, like that was a gimmick, you know, classy. You know, like the traditional singing group. It was more of a quintessential singing group and they could sing they butts off, man. They could hold a harmony like no other. I don't really think I gotta explain who Boys the Men are. You know, one of the biggest groups of all time. But in that same token, Jodeci was like the bad boys of the of R&B, so to speak, as far as the R&B groups. They had the swag, they had girls love them, the, the fellas rock with them, they was on some hood stuff, they dressed like us, they looked like us. They used to wear these boots, we used to call Jodeci boots. We even did the two steps and everything. And with the spray, we got them spray painted on the side, and then you probably took it a step further with the overalls and the spray painted overalls and all that. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I know I'm getting there, but I'm just trying to bring y'all there, like bring y'all that vibe for a lot of y'all shorties that don't know nothing about that. This is what we was doing back then. I was just a shorty myself at the time, so my eyes was lit up. I didn't care. You know, Joe to see those was my people's Boys and Men's was cool, but we was too young to really literally get into Boys and Men like that. Like nobody, we not as a nine-year-old. The nine-year-old me, we wasn't checking for Boys and Men. We was checking for Joe to see. I'm gonna keep it a bean. Even though we rock with Boys and Men, and they was just coming out, they was the biggest thing out. Like I said, it was pop stars. So we was listening to Jodeci. But aside from that, we came for the Coupe de Gras. Well, I came for the Coupe de Gras. Because back then, all the kids used to dance, including myself. We were doing all the hammer moves, the typewriter, all that. Like, all the moves. Hammer was my guy. So that's what I was coming for. So my aunt made my day. That was like the ultimate thing. So she took me to my very first concert. And when I say Hammer was everything I thought he would be. And when I say the man put on the show with the pyrotechnics, the, the 70 million dancers in the background, the singers, the whole shebang bang And the man never stopped moving. Like, he never stopped dancing. He, I don't, I, don't, I can't even really call him taking a break. I mean, the man non-stop. The man did a first half. You knew the headliner. The man did a, the first hour of the show. He, he went into like an intermission. The man come back again. Hit you with another hour and a half going crazy. Like, shut it down, man. Like, I don't think nobody had a voice. I think that was 
like one if that was to be my very first concert, that was the dopest thing ever. And I think like at that time, I don't even think I was bitten by the music bug then, but I was just a fan, just being a kid and a and just mesmerized by all the talent. I saw how when Boys the Men started singing, the chicks in the back were screaming like, uh, I, could, I could still remember the piercing screech. Like the screams was like piercing, like screaming, like I, girls was losing their mind. I, I, I'm surprised I still got eardrums. That's just how much they were screaming. Very irritating, I'll keep it a beam, but that was an experience. Like to not ever go to a concert, I think, you know, one of the things I always wanted to do, I always wanted to go to a Michael Jackson concert, but you know, if y'all was uh, alive or old enough to go to a Michael Jackson concert, then you know good and well you probably couldn't afford it unless you had that money because Michael Jackson tickets was not cheap, like thousands of dollars type of deals, like in the nosebleed section. Like Michael Jackson tickets was not easy to get, and you probably couldn't get them because they sold out in seconds. If I couldn't do Michael Jackson, put it this way, MC Hammer is by far the closest thing you're gonna get to that in terms of, of a show entertainment nowadays you know um some would say beyonce or anything like that this is before beyonce before all of that we talking about a rapper a rapper that danced more than he rapped but the man knew how to put on a show the man danced it was like a aerobics class the way they was dressed up then they came with these big hairstyles i still remember this one dude in particular i had a cousin that had the same head dude i wonder if i could find if i could find a picture of that i'm gonna put it up here my man's, it was this particular background dance and how my head is my man's used to be in the videos too. Man had like a finger wave, pompadour type of, but the, the, the and they did the, it was like a swoop, you know, like a swoop. It was a pompadour swoop, finger wave thing. Looked like he took a bunch of sprints or, or fried, it was like a fried chili, like a, you know how like, you had to see it, man. It was something unbelievable. But these, they was all the way together, man. They had like the fancy sequin suits on, like something you would definitely not wear even back then. But as far as, you know, being a sh uh, the ultimate showman to put on the show, what I saw was the power of music, the power of somebody controlling the crowd. Not just Hammer, but like all the artists, the brothers that could sing, like Boys the Men, Jodeci, how they control the crowd, had the crowd in the palm of their hand. And like everybody had they sense respectfully. You had a couple surprises here and there. Man, like when I say like, and I always thought when I first seen that, from that point on, like every concert I went to, I thought it had to be on that level or at least close to. And I could be honest with you, like I've probably been to a couple dope concerts, but and we'll talk about that another time, but I definitely had to share that. Like I said, this is not a podcast, so we just pretty much we bound if I if I'm moved by a different subject matter or in between work, um whenever this come out, it definitely won't be Sunday. It'll probably be sometime during the weekday or at the end of the week, but who knows, you know? I might just drop this one right away, man, because this one is definitely near dead to my heart, and every time I think about my very first concert, I always think about my aunt. Definitely, it's gonna be a time I'm gonna definitely mention her again. We built a lot of memories with my aunt, so that's the beauty of uh, family at that time when I was a shorty. In every family, we always have um, certain individuals that we either gravitate to or take a page from and my aunt was like one of my favorite people like on my dad's side of the family or if not my very yeah she was about my favorite you know what i mean like my aunt was all that man and like i'm telling you like i never met nobody like her in my life yet even to this day my aunt been gone for months quite some time I, I think my aunt been gone since 99 and even to this day i think about her to this day and i, I miss her like crazy and i think i speak for everybody else that she ever, you know, came across, I mean, definitely like her kids. And I'm pretty sure like all my cousins, they telling their grandkids about their grandmama, I'm telling you, man. She was a, a phenomenal woman, a boss of all bosses. She did it big, man, she did it the right way. She left an impact on a lot of people. And I can say I'm very fortunate that my aunt was one of those people that did it for me. Like, you know, my love for that, man, I miss her. I'm, Okay, it's kind of hard to not talk about her, to be honest, you know what I mean? And in some way, shape, or form, she gets talked about all the time, and she's loved to this day, and people talk about her and say great things about her to this day, and very rare you hear people, and people can speak on you like that, even in death or after. I mean, it's been so long, I can say it was time well spent. So that's my story, that's my time for the night. And um, I just wanted to share that with y'all. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close this thing out. Make sure y'all like and subscribe and hit that notification.
notification button. Right now, if you're watching this, all my subs, man, tell a friend, tell somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody to like and subscribe and hit that notification button. We're trying to get this watch time up. I think I talked a little bit too much. I'm getting a little bit better. I'm trying to get a little bit more organized with the timing. So, man, we done ran for about 25 minutes. So I'm gonna cut this joint off real quick. And this is me signing off. And y'all know my slogan. Keep God first, stay sucker free. And by all means, get to the money. Peace and love, stay healthy. And don't forget to go to www.powercircle.biz for all of your exclusive merch. Definitely our hair busters knockout seasoning that will definitely bless you. You can put it on just about anything. And it's healthy for you too as well, man. It's got a lot of cool things in there for your health. You got your turmeric in there for your inflammatory system. You got the ginger in there in case you get a little nauseous. So it's a lot of cool things in there, man. Just look up or go to www.powercircle.biz and check it out. And if you need any of our services, our services will be up. Our services page will be up very, very soon soon I get a lot of that now we literally getting it all together I am getting a lot of my workload out of the way so I got a little bit of wiggle room so we just trying to stay organized and definitely I appreciate everybody that purchased the seasoning online definitely got some more spices coming we definitely gonna be putting more products up there so just you know stay in tune with us we got more content coming up there we got exclusive content which I will talk about at a later date as well so I'm gonna leave it at that peace and love I'm out of here love y'all to death